And what is going on, everybody? Welcome back. This is Lore Forge Live, episode 33. This is live at happy hour number two. And we're your hosts. My name is Jibs, and I'm joined by Cash. Hey, everybody. That's Sonny's <laughs> favorite saying when we start the show. How are A you? rubber band show. <laughs> it just kind of happens, you know? It's just like you're surrounding the bend. Bring it, it in. Emphasize though when he does it after you do it. Yeah, it's exactly, <laughs> exactly. Full transparency. That's what I say when he calls on me first, and I don't have anything to say. <laughs> I'll have a lot to say later. I promise you that. But right off the bat, I'm like, ooh, I gotta get warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> it almost reminds me of the NBA jam announcer. He's coming up. He's warming up. <laughs> and Sonny Raven Courts here. I am not on a fast. I thought Cash was going to lead with his big conversation about how he hasn't eaten in seven days. But uh, I uh, was, you know, it just my whole my whole bag just got deflated here because I had a big joke about it. And then he didn't do it and went with the ridiculous rubber band intro. And now I got nothing. <laughs> I could I could talk about my fast. But remember, I don't I don't give uh, I don't give a dietary advice because people get hurt. <laughs> So there's one that. guy, one time. That one guy. <laughs> one guy, one time left yeah. their Discord, and now you're all bent about it forever. <laughs> I'm not, I'm seriously not bent about it because I'm not, I don't give anybody any advice unless they ask for it. And even then, it's off the cuff. I'm not doing it on the show. I'm just sharing my lifestyle. So there's that. Oh, you're, you're missing a big window. I give unsolicited advice all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Cash, we need a 37 minute lecture on how the proper way to eat, how to eat. Properly. How to eat, please. How to Go eat. On. I am not <laughs> diving into that slippery, slippery slope. <laughs> One time. One, One time. time. One time. Oh, gosh. Well, everyone, again, welcome to everyone who's here. Everyone here. We're doing this live, by the way, over at Twitch. Welcome in, everybody. All of you. Thank you all so much for being here at Loreforce Live. Now, this episode is 100% built by the patrons. We said it earlier. It's happy hour number two. So all the discussions tonight, whatever they wanted to talk about. It's we're doing it live. We're doing it all here and we're doing something new and it makes sense for us to do this. And we've been purposely waiting to do this. However, tonight we're going to surprise you with some what cash. Well, if you've known us from times past, then you will know one thing that we do love is lore. And if you've been with us for a while, one of the things that made our last project, I think, uh, more popular than we ever anticipated was it was the fact that we do lore lessons on what we're covering. Da -da -da. And uh, we're going to bring that to Loreforge because it does make sense. And uh, we're going to do it in bite sized bits and we're going to discuss things a little bit. We might not do them every show, but tonight we're going to. We're going to start uh, start it off with a pretty fun little lore lesson. Yeah, that was one thing we really wanted to highlight, too, is keep it bite size. We call it behind the scenes drive through lore. It's like you're going through a drive through. It's like you get your order, you get your food and you're out. That's kind of I am a little I'm a little disappointed we didn't call it fun facts. <laughs> oh, of course you are. <laughs> oh, I can certainly <laughs> add some fun Ooh. facts into these lore <laughs> lessons. Is it because you love to was... squeal? Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Did what? Did you hear that? I, do, Dude, I I'm love gonna fun yellow, facts. I love I'm going to yellow facts. flag. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to apologize for my love of fun facts. <laughs> Speaking of something we talk about, what's with these zebra pants that you wear, Sonny, during these? Oh, they're my lucky Hawkeye pants. Who? These, those are my lucky. Those those pants don't lose. Let me tell Was you. It, were they so, your wives at one point? And no, no, they no? were. Uh, they were a friend of mine that works for the Hawkeyes, uh -huh. and. So he gets like just insane amounts of clothing, right? Like Nike just pounds these guys with clothes and he is, uh, he's a coach on the team. And so yeah. he's been around for many, many years and just has like ungodly amounts of clothes. So he has boxes of these clothes that he needs to get rid of. And so I'll go over there every now and then and just like gather clothes. And there was this pair of pants that is, I don't know if anybody remembers the nineties, but there was a thing called Zubaz pants <laughs> and they were like, they were like modern day pajama pants, but they were like zebra striped and all these crazy colors and all the teams had uh, had them. And his wife was just like, you cannot seriously be taking those pants for any like legitimate reason. Right. I'm like, no, I'm going to wear these on game days. And so if you look at the Instagram, I am wearing a pair of zebra print Hawkeye yellow and black pants and Sunny. they are lucky. 
So lucky. Sonny, I'm so sorry to tell you, you said that those pants don't lose. If mm -hmm. you walk out the front door with those pants on, <laughs> you're going to lose because you might be shot by a big game. <laughs> Safari. Oh. oh, gosh, that's good. They're they're beautiful. They're just a beautiful item. You know what? They're not clothes. They're fashion. It's not. <laughs> cool. It's a way of life. <laughs> right. Look, there's like Lifestyle. something that you would wear when you're white claw wasted. Oh, or two chicks. Isn't that another brand? Two chicks. Or two, two chicks. chicks. I prefer a good two chicks. Oh Thank my you. gosh, Sunny, stop. We can't. We can't. We can't. Why? Right, I'm. Uh, <laughs> No, we're moving on. We're moving on. Ashes I'm of creation, unapologetic please. on this. Unapologetic. Ashes of creation, please save us. <laughs> All right. So everyone, again, welcome in. And uh, yes, this episode is 100% built by our patron community. And so before we do that, though, we're going to jump into the lore lesson. And what we're doing the lore lesson on... So I wanted to get us started off from the very top. And sometimes it's going to be me covering. Sometimes it's going to be Sonny or Jibs covering uh, some of these topics. But we're going to start checking the boxes on a baseline of lore. So for the folks who don't uh, who don't know the lore or maybe they've read the lore and they're like, what? I don't even know what the F that is. I'm confused. We are going to bring some clarity to these things for you in short little bite size snippets. That's what you like to call it. Anyway, tonight, today... We are going to cover the basics of the origin story because it can be very confusing. Stephen has a very intricate mind. So I think uh, I think it'd be really good for us to just kind of go through some of this stuff so everybody kind of understands. Uh, if the guys have questions, they're going to throw some questions out or just points to make. Um, so anyway, let's get started here. Um, if you have read through the lore at all, then you understand that this origin story begins with an entity, a pantheon of gods that was known as the Ten. And um, these, this Ten, they all had various qualities, and only some of them have been revealed to us so far, but we do know of a few of them. So the Ten had many creations. Okay, these gods had many creations, and they needed something to hold stewardship over these creations and something to protect and foster their creations. So the 10 created a race of beings and imbued this race with all of their qualities. And this race of beings was known as the ancients. Now, over time, these ancients, having been, uh, having been imbued with so many of these godly characteristics, became very powerful. And the 10 who created them did not expect their power to grow as much as it did. So the 10 began to meet to decide how to deal with this power that had gone awry. Now, arguments ensued amongst the 10 in how, that they, sh in how they should deal with this power that was growing in the ancients. And rifts began to form in between these gods. Now, unbeknownst to the whole group, Three of the ten gods snuck away and secretly began to teach the ancients the ways of the essence. And we're going to go into the essence on another lore lesson, but just know this. The essence is the magical force in the universe that we would define as magic. So it was a secret that the gods wanted to keep. So when the remaining seven learned that the three had been teaching the ancients the ways of the essence, the ways of magic, they got a little pissed. So these three who had split off to do this, to, to teach the ways of the essence to the ancients, became known as the others. So that's where you hear of the ten. The ten were separated into three. The three that broke off and started to do kind of evil deeds was known as the others. And the ancients were the race that was built with all the qualities of the gods. So when the seven broke off from the three, the three obviously went with the, uh, with the ancients because they were kind of all on their side and a great celestial battle ensued between the seven remaining gods and the others in the ancients who had now teamed up. Now this took place according to Stephen's lore over a period of eons 
which I know Sonny has a problem with because that's a long freaking time that all this, that this celestial battle in the sky was taking place. <laughs> so know this, with every great blow that was taking place within this, this realm of the skies, a star was born in the night sky. So every time you look up when you're in Vera and you see all those stars in the sky, every one of those was a blow during this great celestial battle. Now, in the end, the seven, the seven of the 10 original gods, they were victorious and they took the others and the ancients and banished them into the magicless void in space. So the remaining seven, having been done with the celestial battle and now knowing the error of their ways, they went back to the drawing board to create beings to inhabit and watch over their creation. Now that they thought, Everybody else is out of the way. Let's really figure this out and come up with a race of beings that can watch over our creation. So the, the seven decided to split their qualities into four distinct races instead of just one. And that they knew that into one, it clearly didn't work. So they, they split all of their qualities, their godly qualities into four distinct races and hence the creation of the dwarves, the elves, the humans, and the orcs was born. So in order to have a place for these races to dwell, you also have the creation of Vera, which the gods created. Now, all of this, as this is described by Stephen, all of this is witnessed by the player at the very beginning of your journey. And this takes place in the dream of, in a dream of your character, which could be a nightmare. And then apparently before you start the game, we will be as players witnessing this and then waking up in a sweat, in a cold sweat after an apparent nightmare. So that in a nutshell, and there's a lot to it, folks, this branches off into several different topics that we're going to be covering. But in a nutshell, that is the origin story, which explains who are the 10, who are the ancients, and who are the others. And what the hell happened for us <laughs> to end up where we're going to end up? Gentlemen, wow. your thoughts? That, well, first of all, that is fantastic. Like, I love the fact that we are going to establish, like, the foundation of this whole thing. Um if I am personally a member of the Flat Varen Society, do I still believe in the stars uh, being created like that? That is just kind of generally a question for you. I would be open to um, any conspiratorial thoughts on, <laughs> on the would. matter. Um, but it would require a foil hat. <laughs> oh, good. I, I would like to see a foil hat uh, when you, when you uh, unleash such conspiratorial thoughts. <laughs> but um, no, if you're a member, if you're the founding member or a founding member of the Flat Varen Society, then I expect something good because yes. we're going to turn this into lore, bro. I'd be pretty good. Um, OK, so I do good. have a couple questions here. Um, so there's a couple confusing things in here when you hear like about the seven, the three, the ancients, the others. Right. So the one that gets me is that the three. So you got. You got the 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 gods and then the gods break into a seven and three split over their creation. The ancients, the three is also called the others though, right? Correct. Just so I'm absolutely clear on that. Okay. So here's my question. And I have no idea if you're going to be able to answer this, answer this or not. Um, when the 10 of them got together and created the ancients or the ancients supposed to do something was there a purpose for them creating the ancients? They were going to have a mean rager on one Friday night. <laughs> Just not enough people at the party. They were going to crack create. those stars, their star rave sticks, and just go. <laughs> and drop Someone's the Someone's got to DJ this thing. I got to create a being <laughs> to DJ it. <laughs> Perfect. I was in the zone. I was in the zone with an answer, and then I got completely derailed. So I want to thank my friend Jibs for, for doing that. And now I don't have an answer for you. I do, actually. I was just kidding. Yeah, he does. He's um, just being stubborn. Funny. He's being his high elf. Go ahead. Continue. What were they Hello. made for? What were the ancients made for? So for the way that I understand this, and this is complete interpretation because there is no actual answer. But seeing as how 
once the the three or the ancients were created, the three broke off. It pissed off the other seven. Um, and once the celestial battle was done, the seven went back to the drawing board to, and they understood the error of their ways. If we take all of our traits and put them into one race, that's not the way to do it. They're going to be too powerful. So they split all of those traits into the four races, the elves, the orcs, the dwarves, and what the humans. Okay. And they did that. The reason they did that was so that those four races could hold stewardship over their creations. So the way I understand it is when they created the ancients, they were looking to do the same thing. They had a lot of, they created the universe. Essentially these gods created the universe and in doing so, they screwed up. They put all of their qualities into the one race of the ancients, and they realized that they were becoming too powerful to hold stewardship over their creation. So once that problem was out of the way, they went back into the boardroom, started talking about it, and like, hey, let's split all these up and make it more manageable, make our traits more manageable among the four, and they can hold stewardship over our creation. And in order to do that, they created Vera, a place for them to live and thrive. Mm. I always like that because it's just like that classic, oh, you know, like a baddie makes something and realizes, oh, oops. Um, Rick, you turned the difficulty level too high here. <laughs> too much power. Is that a, is yeah. that a nine or a that, six? <laughs> it was a three, Rick. A three. Why can I smell the brakes burning right now? <laughs> Oh, it's like, yeah, and then they go into full damage control. So and and I like that we get that, yeah. you know, like right off the bat, because admittedly, when I was reading this wiki and I was kind of going backtracking a little bit to like when we first when was our first episode, like when did that actually first begin for us here at Lower Forge. And so it got me thinking, because then I found in our one of our private discord channels, all the audio uh, of, of the dev updates from months and months ago, I was listening to listening on my way to work. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I realized I, I we started reading the Salor in like of last year, like June or July. And I really feel like it took me several read throughs, particularly at the beginning, several read throughs of this initial like foundational lore until I feel like I got it because Oftentimes, I feel like whenever it comes to stories or, or, or IPs, oftentimes the foundational lore can be a little muddy for people to get. And although it took me a little bit to, I feel like, to grasp it, I will say that I'm glad it's there because it gives, I think, overall, and this is probably more of a statement than, than a, than a follow-up question, but I feel like it gives us that foundation, foundational base that we can then build off of, you know, in the future. I know we've talked numerous times about like, well, we hope we never fight an ancient. We hope we never fight, you know, some, we don't want to be the guy, right? We just want to be a guy. And so I'm glad that at least that we have that foundational, right, right at the onset, Cash, you were talking about the dream, you know, and so it was just very cool. Yeah, and it, it, it can be a little bit confusing. And that's why I think, uh, and this, this honestly, if we get questions about stuff, like we're like when, when we're streaming or like when Sunny stream or when I'm streaming, Jib stream is streaming, we get, this is the question we get. So can you explain the difference between the 10, the others, and the ancients? Mm -hmm. So, and um, like, I, re I see this, this separation of the gods uh, they they were all well-meaning, except three of them had some different ideas and just, you know, and godly slash human nature pissed off the other ones. Um, and then there, there ended up being a split. And that creates the base conflict in in the universe, which I love. I got one last follow up for you real quick here before we move on, because I do want to get on to the to the last one here. But. If. If they put all of their abilities into the ancients and they said, no, 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 that's too much. And then they split them up and then put it, put those people on Vera and then waited eons. Let's just say eons. A long time. <laughs> A long time. I disagree with your eons, Stephen. <laughs> anyway, and then they kind of mingle around and become Tolnar. Are Tolnar not just reverse ancients? 
Uh, yeah, maybe to a lesser degree. They're like what you get when you put all the soft drinks into one drink and then you dare your friend to drink it. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> Well, right, but maybe it's a watered down version because like you figure the unfiltered version of all of the traits of the gods were put into the ancients and then they went, oh shit, they're gone. (laughs) We need to do something about this one. And then maybe they decided to like put a half-life on on the power that they were imbuing into the four races. And then again, that's going to get watered down when the four races interbreed and turn into a Tolnar in the un- in the under uh, under realm, right? I feel like so. Tolnar is what you would get if you took something and you run it through Google Translate into like Hebrew, <laughs> and then you run it back into English. That's kind of what I think we're we're getting there. Right, right. You're getting uh, you're getting a watered down version yeah. of of a rumor, kind of like not the if you, same. <laughs> yeah, it's and it's exactly this. This is how it kind of works out. If you're if you have ten people in a room, the first person tells a very poignant secret to the to another person, and then it keeps going down the line. These secrets, by the time it gets to the last person, it's completely diluted and strange. Right. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I'm what I'm looking at here. But I think. What is being established here is this separation of the just and the unjust and the sneaky. And it brings you right back into the classic struggle between good and evil. And I think that's where this dichotomy for what is going to be transpiring. Of course, we don't know what's going to be transpiring, but it gives a good foundation for good versus evil in the world. And this is where I'm not going to go too much into this, but this is where it's kind of like the light side and the dark side of the force. You have this essence, this magical being in Vera that starts off good. It starts off as a good magical energy, but the others and the ancients are banished to the void, but they will make their return and have morphed what the essence is into something called corruption. And there is a way that they do that. And we're not covering it tonight. We're going to cover that on a future lore lesson. Well done. Well done, Cash. That's the first one. There we go. Now we're on a roll, right? Yep. Tag, you're it. (laughs) <laughs> oh boy <laughs> well that's good stuff that's good stuff well anyway yeah uh, for everyone who's watching because a lot of you watch on YouTube or whether you're listening on an RSS feed podcast on a podcast app somewhere let us know what lore you want us to cover here on the show we would love to hear from you through our quote unquote drive through lore that we're doing here on the podcast so gentlemen live at happy hour discussion topics we are we have quite a few to field through we'll try to get through them all but this one was uh, a really interesting question, and this comes to us from Rogue Si, who I believe is in chat this evening. Rogue, what's up, my brother? Um, says, "Quote: Should a tutorial be within the menus, parentheses, pop-ups, and such, or should this be a more immersive part of the game, such as an NPC guide to let you act? Well, I'm sorry, to get you acclimated to the very basics of Vera after coming through the portal." and then let the character, quote, figure out the systems with only small tips or hints in a journal of some sort that are unlocked after an initial trial of X system in-game to lead the exploration and deep system dive to the players themselves. Gentlemen, feel free to jump in. I'll go first on this one. This one is one of those ones where I historically, and first of all, Rogue, fantastic question, right? You've got the two different sides of the coin here you have the very simple like tutorial uh npc guide that follows you around and he's like hey i think we should go rent a caravan (laughs) it's like you should talk to this guy it's like isn't he great let's get this caravan it's like why don't you sit right there (laughs) and then you go do the whole thing right and it's fun and some games do it well and some games don't do it well one of the best ones i've ever played was hell divers recently hell divers tutorial is the it is 
It is so singularly funny that it is the only game I've ever played where I wanted to finish the tutorial and thought I might want to run the tutorial again. <laughs> Cause it was you just... are the savior of super <laughs> earth as <laughs> mediocre as your skills are. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's so good. So good. So like good. The, yeah. one of the parts that I laughed the most at was right at the beginning before I realized like how funny this is. And he and he goes, I'll, I'll be your trainer on this thing, but watch out because I'm not easily impressed. And then you like climb up a two foot like ledge. And he's like, that was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> is this the guy that said he wasn't impressed? <laughs> <laughs> oh. impressive <laughs> i was dying but anyway back to the point the other side of the coin is just like a crap load of like menus and things like that right and then you can get you know versions in between and everything like that i always thought that if you didn't have a fully fleshed out npc in some big elaborate guide that it was a sign of Maybe laziness, kind of, but also just like a lack of uh, development, you know, like it wasn't quite ready. I don't think I feel that way anymore. Um, I've played games where they they just guide you through with with basic things and they let you figure out some of the systems. And sometimes that experience for me is better than what I would get if I felt like I was being dragged by the nose through like Orgrimmar or something like that. Right. It, I, I don't mind those situations as much as I used to. I used to think I had to have that NPC. I don't feel that way anymore. That's mm. me. Yeah. I, I think that's an interesting point. Uh, recently I was playing ESO and I made a new character and I was going through the tutorial. And one thing that I remembered was that they had actually changed it since we had last been there. And um, one thing I will say, I they do good tutorials. Uh, you know, the NPC takes you through there, and it's, you know, you're walking through a storyline in the midst of a tutorial, which was really cool because it was really immersive. And I will say New Worlds at the beginning, that was very cut, uh, very cut and dry, like very short, but it was very like, hey, this is this, this is that, and then you're off, right? Which I appreciate that as well. And so I think I appreciate a mix of both of those things where it's a little bit cut and dry. This is the most basic of stuff, but the rest of it you're going to have to learn through playing, through exploration and, you know, maybe some kind of small, like immersive storyline that could take you, you know, like a quick short story experience or something that you, a player could enjoy. I think that for me would, would suit me well for a tutorial. But what do you think, Cash? Um. First of all, I do want to uh, I want to say thanks to Rogue for the question. And Rogue had mentioned this was uh, Axeman's question originally and that he just kind of expounded upon it. Rogue, a short segue here. I just wanted you to know in case you're looking for your pawn in Dragon's Dogma 2, I stole her. She's mine for uh, a few days um, and I might not give her back. So thank you very much for that. But um, yeah, I'm going to get her all dialed up for you. Oh, um, if you're playing, if you're playing Dragon's Dogma 2, then you, you kind of know. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, for me, when it comes to game tutorials, um, I am Jibs. I'm glad you mentioned new worlds because for as much as we kick new world in the nuts repeatedly, there's some really good crap in New World, you guys. I loved, I loved that tutorial. It it was it was beautiful. It was immersive. It kind of set the tone for for the game right off the bat. And I liked how you were going through certain things, and then the game would pause, and then bloop, a little tutorial thing would pop up. You'd read it, you'd hit the button, and you just continue with what you're doing. And it did that to teach you the basic mechanics of the game. Perfect. Loved it. I thought that was a really, really good uh, take on a very quick down and dirty tutorial. However, um, if it's not things like the initial movement, uh, combat, UI, in how to use your inventory, if it's not anything like that and you start to get into the deeper systems of the game, I think that still immersive would be fantastic if it's like NPC quest-based tutorial where it's walking you through some stuff 
you get rewards that are appropriate for whatever that discipline is that you're doing. So if it's uh, something for crafting, you get uh, crafting mats, um, you get actually get to open up that part of your of your crafting um, or your artisan, whatever you're going into, whatever NPC that you have gone to to learn the skill from, they put you through uh, some type of a quest line. And it appears at first glance and from what's being touted, it appears that that is exactly how a lot of those systems are going to be taught to the player mm. in Ashes of Creation specifically is through those through tutorials or quest lines. And yeah. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a flavor game, right? Like it's it's one of those things where you have to get it right and it just has to feel right. Yeah. Um and, and you can accomplish that in a bunch of different ways. Some of the worst ones I, I have played uh come by way of like city builders. Um city builders are notoriously bad for this, where it's just a pop-up menu when you click on something and now you have seven pages of like insane text that you have to read to figure something out. And it's like, oh my god. Like I wanted to do this, but I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's uh, it's something that really is a feel game. I will agree with you. The New World, I thought, did a great job of introducing the story and giving you the mechanics at the exact same time. Um, and, and that's really probably the goal for an MMO, right? I think that there's a level in which I just don't want them anymore, um, especially with like cities and stuff like that. When I go into towns, I don't need you to show me every single little thing that happens in the game and how it works. Like I can, I can figure some of that stuff out, but the very beginning, you know, I, I, I really enjoyed that combination of the two things. Yeah. It's, it's funny you talk about feel because I feel like that with the tutorials, it's such a balance. It's such a balance for the developer team because they have to make it in such a way that it conveys what it needs to convey but it can't stick around too long, right? Like it has to be to where it's, yeah. you get the player what they need, but it's not making the player feel like I just want this to be over, right? So it's just like the, this is, it's this weird dance, I feel like. But, you know, we've yeah. seen great ones and we've seen really rough, rough ones, you know? And so, yeah. Yeah. You know, I have. Absolutely. There is, a, there's definitely been examples on both ends uh, of that spectrum. And speaking of which, I'm going to do the next one here. Yeah. If that's all yeah. right with Take you. Take it. Take it. Okay, so this comes from our good friend, Chief Koala. Chief Koala says, he starts it off by immediately putting himself down. <laughs> so, so I haven't thought about this enough to be able to formulate a question as clearly as I would hope. But there is a topic that I've been thinking about lately that relates heavily to the risk versus reward aspect. Okay, so here's what he goes with. So, imagining a sliding scale from a game that is baseline fun all the time, that's on one side, fun all the time, to the other side, that is periods of extreme fun with moments or even days where the game is actively frustrating and maybe like not fun at all. Where would you like to be on that scale? You have like just the general, yeah, I like this game. It's good to the like mind blowing moments of just awesomeness combined with frustration and things like that. What do you think, Cash? Um, first of all, I, I, the question makes me laugh a little bit because <laughs> I see what you're saying. It's a hard, it's a hard question to put into words, but I think it like, of course, everybody wants their game to be extremely fun all the time. And on the other hand, nobody wants their game to ever be not fun, but we all know that that's, it's not the case. It's you run the gamut of these things in your gaming experience. And there's definitely moments of each and at any point, you know, any span in between. Um, when it comes to risk versus reward, there's going to be times where you're absolutely going to get both extremes. Like there's zero doubt in my mind. Um, there's going to be times where you're going to be really, really frustrated. You're going to have uh, full bags full of loot and somebody's going to come along and smack you and take that loot. There's going to be times when you at the very end of a caravan, you're going to lose it. <laughs> it's just it's going to happen when you think you're there and then you just get killed like right before you turn the stuff in. It's going to happen. Um, so for me, I suppose if we're talking that sliding scale, I suppose that I'm going to be somewhere in the middle. And the reason being is because, of course, you want those fun and elating times. 
but at the same time, I'm willing to go through moments of frustration to get those moments of elation. And the way that I could, I guess I can best explain this is when you're, say, in a raid group in another game and you're throwing yourself at a brick wall of a boss for weeks on end. People are making the same mistakes. The raid leader's getting pissed. Um, you're having to swap people out. People are just frustrated. But then you finally hit that night where everybody's firing on all cylinders and through the stroke of pure luck or through just pure practice and understanding the fight, you finally get that boss down. Those are, it's exactly what we're talking about. Those moments of pure frustration that are topped. They're completely topped by those amazing times of elation where discord erupts, everybody's super stoked and happy. You finally got the boss down and that's what you've been working for for weeks. So, and I think those, I think there'll be plenty of those moments in Ashes of Creation and that's really what I'm looking forward to. So if you ask me where I want to be on that sliding scale, boop, drop me right in the middle. Yeah, I think that's solid, a solid, uh, solid answer and also a solid question. I'm going to answer it by saying I think I can go for either or. What I ultimately look for is immerse, give me something that I can immerse myself into. Let me immerse myself in the world to where I'm fully enjoying myself and having fun. And, you know, by my immersiveness, I guess, in the world, you know, and the things of it, of the game. <laughs> I don't know. And this to me, like, I'll take either way. I'll honestly take either way. If I'm enjoying the game and the story's good, you know, whatever, the systems are great. It's, it's just, it f captures the word MMO. Well, then I'll take whatever comes with it. Like, there's really no sliding scale for me aside from, hey, I just want to play a game where I can fa truly fall in love with the world again. And then whatever happens from that, whether it's times like Cash is talking about of days of frustration or days of constant fun and awesomeness, sure. But, like, just give me that. Give me that world. <laughs> uh, give me that IP that I can just immerse myself in. I think that that for me is the key. <clears throat> I feel like you are more on the side, though, on the first side, where you just want it to be generally fun. Because I feel like that's like more of like that that immersive sort of aspect, right? Like if you can go into the world and the world is a place that you feel comfortable in and you enjoy walking around and you enjoy the things and you can do some stuff and you just feel like you're there, right? That's your immersive part of it. I... I, I know what you're saying that you don't mind some of that other stuff. If it like feels like that all the time, I, I think for me, I'm more on that end of, of it as well, that I want just generally the, the fun, constant feel of the world with the other stuff, the, the, like the mind blowing moments and the achievement and those those magical things, um, those are awesome. And those are the things that we talk about. Like those are the things that you talk about in Discord. But it's not what keeps me in a game. Um, it really isn't. I will not slog through hell to have that moment in Discord. I want to consistently go into this world and generally be having fun. Um, and, and sometimes for me that, that might be like a really weird take because I spend so much time dealing with economy stuff, but I'm telling you right now, man, if this freehold system turns out to be what I think it might turn out to be like, I'm going to be a farmer. <laughs> I'm just going to be on my freehold <laughs> brewing beer, running the tavern, doing that stuff. I'm going to have like suspenders when I run for mayor. I'm going to be like, look, I'm just a small town farmer here. <laughs> it is, it is going to be uh, amazing. Your mic's cash. Muted. Oh, <laughs> you are a professional. Turn on more oh, I have my window open and there was a very loud vehicle outside. So. 
turn that on. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say, though, I had a really great insult queued up for Sonny, and that was um, that all that stuff about your freehold and running for mayor is great. But if you run your city, you run your freehold, your mayorship, the way that you are playing foundation right Ooh. now. All right. <laughs> bro, you're out. That, that could be the first mud slinging campaign mm -hmm. when people start pulling out your your history. <laughs> Yeah, of running the city and foundation. I may have put on a few more mods than I was willing to uh, to learn about, and it turns out that some of them were a little bit uh, punishing to say the average person's food intake. <laughs> so. I was watching his stream today, and apparently, I was employed as a guard, and uh -huh. I left, and he was literally yelling at me for <laughs> abandoning my post. You did. You <laughs> left town. You just <laughs> wandered off the woods. <laughs> Oh, oh, buddy, that's good. You still, you still have my vote for mayor. We might start you off at Alderman, and then <laughs> that's right. Maybe I should apprentice or something. Wait, where am I at in your city? What do you have me doing? Uh you. <laughs> well, see, the problem is this: oh. I've named a lot of people in the city, but after you don't feed them for a while, they tend to wander off, you know, <laughs> in search of say <laughs> food or something like that. So I've had to rename a lot of people. I'm not sure where you currently are. You're probably a cheesemaker or something like that. Oh, you're the town crier. <laughs> for, for, for what do you actually know what the town criers were for i learned this from my daughter who's in freaking mortuary school no okay. go on town criers were literally hired to mourn <laughs> they were hired mourners for the dead yeah that's really? still depressing i was like excuse me what did you make that up she's like no i did not make that up mourners <laughs> for hire yeah yeah town criers Who like, thunk it? well at least that's what it says in her book so anyway, interesting. I digress. Are you looking it up? Because <laughs> if not you are, I'm, it up. I'm not looking it up. Oh, I thought you were looking it up. I was going to say, because if no. you are, then I'm going to hold. OK, anyway, let's move on to the next question. I like that last one, too. It's pretty good. Uh, the next one's from Axeman, and it's very simple. How quickly should your character gain experience, Jibs? Uh, as slow or slower than World of Warcraft vanilla. Woof. As slow or slower than World of Warcraft vanilla. Because I'm going to tell you why. There's a video that I've been wanting to do and I've never done. Lord knows if it'll ever actually be done. But it's on the topic of leveling immersion. Level in, in other words, you need that time in your leveling experience to grow and get connected to your character. There's a reason why there's so much weight that was carried back in the day into picking your class. Because you knew the weight of that decision. Because it was going to take you a long time to get to where you need to go. And there's bonus, there's pluses and minuses to that. One of the pluses is one, you get really acquainted and really, you, you really bond with your class. You really become that character when you're able to have a slower leveling experience. Now, the trick is to this is that you don't want it to feel too long, right? Like you don't want it to feel like it's just dragging on. Level 30 and up from New World at launch, dragged on it wasn't enjoyable it just kept going and going it was like the energizer bunny man just kept going and it just didn't feel like it had much purpose however whenever you think back to the days of like vanilla warcraft and it's slow it, it was it was slow however you really got bond you re could really bond to that character and so for me i want i want it to be on the slower end cash what do you think about this you want to go or you want me to go here uh, go ahead and go. I'll back clean up on this one. Okay. I, I originally was going to say exactly what JB said. I literally was going to say vanilla Warcraft, but you have zebra pants. I think too? the problem I, I was, I, I, you got a daddy named Forrest too. <laughs> <laughs> Did we just become brothers? Uh, <laughs> so much for I, I, I I wanted to say that. And then as you were talking and as you were explaining it, I was thinking to all the games that I've played since then. And I think the problem is that I am wearing the rose colored glasses that only time can provide. I think that I am thinking back to what, what I always called chasing the dragon, right? It's like just that, that first magical experience that you just can never re-experience. You can't. You can't go back and discover an MMO for the first time. It is something that is now baked into us. We've all played MMOs. We understand how they work. We understand the magic of what MMOs are. 
I think that if I do that, I'm inherently going to be wondering like, how can I just kind of move through this? Because while I do love the effect that you get, which is just like you said, the bonding with your character, I don't know whether or not I'll be able to handle that. <laughs> I don't know whether or not I'll be able to handle months because it is months and months. If we're talking about the way that vanilla Warcraft leveled a character from zero to God, what was the level cap at the beginning uh, of this whole thing? Like it was 50, right? Was it 50? I think it was 50. I think it was okay. 50. From zero to 50 took forever. Okay. It took forever to get to get a mount in that game and at that point once you got the mount you're like oh my god now i can run places and everything was just so big and and wonderful and everything but it was it was months and months do we want months and months of this like at the beginning of it i don't know i mean it, it, this is old school MMO, right? And this is what Steven has kind of said. You're going to get old school MMO. Are, are we ready to go back to old school MMO like this? I, would. I am. Go ahead. I jumped right on you. You go ahead. <laughs> no, you're fine. I'm, it's I'm, it's I'm like you were bending right over and tie your right shoe now. and I like jumped on your back and expected like a, a horse ride, you know, a piggy horse ride. So you, <laughs> you go ahead. Oh, super okay. specific. <laughs> Riding crops. That got super weird for a minute. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> um, no, I, I do. And, and Jibs, I know you agree with me on this because I just listened to your take. Um, I am okay with, with having a super long uh, leveling experience right off the bat. My question is, and, like, and I have my own opinion here too that I, I kind of want to get to here in a second, but is, is the gaming world, is our MMO players, our modern MMO players... The same ones who have been riddled and put on a silver platter with nothing but modern conveniences of MMOs, are they going to be okay with a super long leveling process? That one you can answer, James. Um, I think it depends I, less on that, but more about what audience they want to reach. I think it also depends on... Um, <sighs> this is... This is a hard take, and it's probably an unfair take, and probably not, I don't even know a realistic take, truthfully, but I feel, personally, that the MMO world is ready for a reset. It's ready to go back mm. to not just the MMO roots, but the RPG side of those roots. And, Sonny, when you were uh, kind of going off what you were saying... One of the other things that does happen innately when you have these slower leveling experiences is it brings back that love and joy of playing an RPG again. And it just so happens it's multiplayer. And it just so happens it's in this online world. Like, it, it really brings RPG back. And I think that that's just, you know, man, you guys know where I come from, back from the 2004 KOTOR days. You know, when it was slow and it was about the journey, it was about the experience, it was about that role playing game. And I really miss that. And I think that that for me is probably more the reason why I have my take. And so to answer your question, Cash, I don't know, but I, I know what I feel. And that to me is I think the MMO RPG is ready for a reset. If that makes sense. Oh. One thing that I that I will say on this that is a concern for me is is whether or not there's enough content in that middle range, right? Is there enough content that it's not just a slog? Like if if you're keeping me engaged during this long process, that's fine. Um, the other thing that worries me a little bit is when you have that kind of that that kind of you know length in the leveling process is that sometimes your friends get away from you. Sometimes your friends get a little bit ahead or a little bit behind. In my case, they're always ahead. And you just can't play with them. And you can't fix that in any reasonable time frame because they're gone, right? They are gone. And now you are by yourself in this world where you either have to slog out like crazy hours to try to catch up, which is not a lot of fun. And you're going to miss that whole experience. You're not going to enjoy it. Or you just have to learn how to play by yourself, which is 
normally what I would do. Um, so that is a that is an unintended consequence of the long leveling process is sometimes you can get away from your friends. I think the thing that um, that makes me sad is that there's there's so many folks out there and we've it's it's no fault of them. Uh, it's no fault of, you know, the way I do things, too, in, in some of these games is that we have just been delivered on a silver platter, as I was saying, all of these conveniences. So people, all they want to do now is get to the end levels. Like there, there are people that are already talking about how they're, they're just, they're going to, they're going to click through all the quests and they're just going to get there. Um, and that's not the way RPG, RPGs are designed. I used to have this thing that I would say when we were doing uh, lore seekers for Elder Scrolls Online, that every single time you space bar, it was actually SWOTOR too. Yeah. Every single time you space bar, through story, a developer loses their wings. And I stick to that because it, it is a craft. It is an art to have these developers write these stories. And I have my point is, is this. There is so much story. And to Jibs's point about actually enjoying an RPG again, um, and going through that experience of just loving the story and loving the world that you're in, it directly relates to your leveling process. And when that is done correctly, when people are playing through some really neat story and they're kind of getting into the game and starting to love the world that they're in, they're immersing their character in that game, you don't even notice that you're leveling. And that's such a lost art. It is so gone. So to answer this question, um, I believe that like this, this is another one of those sliding scales. It's super subjective for different games and how long should it take? And I know that you guys love this. So in order to put some context to this, I gave it some numbers. I put oh, some no. hard <laughs> numbers. Oh my God. <laughs> now okay. again, these numbers are subjective, <laughs> but it's just to give it some scale for the people who go are on, into numbers. <laughs> different games are, are going to be, you know, different ways. But in, in my experiences with MMOs, which is pretty freaking fast. <laughs> these are the numbers that I came up with. Now, Lower levels, eh, maybe an hour or two of questing, right? Per level. Working that scale, as you get to higher levels, it turns into something that's around six to eight hours per level. But like I said, super subjective based on what you're doing in the game, based on what game you're playing. Is it going to work for Ashes? No, please don't put hardline numbers in there. This is just me trying to make some fun freaking content for the show. <laughs> You look at a game like Black Desert Online, they really don't have a level cap. You go through levels all the way through, I don't know if it's up to 65 or something like that now, and you hit like 60 really quickly. Like it just blasts you through all these levels very, very quickly. And then once you hit 60, and if these numbers are off a little bit, I apologize, but once you hit like around 60, it just... Everything super slows down. So to get from like 61 to 62 is, is going to take you months of grinding. And I guess like the highest, the highest level of anybody in that game is like 63. It's because oh. like once you hit 60, oh. <laughs> it's just super <laughs> slow and there's no level cap in the game. Why not just put a level cap on it? <laughs> Buddy. I, I don't know. And I think I think what it what it turns into is when you have a level cap like that, um, you run into a lot of like the problems that like Elder Scrolls Online ran into with coming up with like some type of a prestige system to where you hit level cap. But how does the power creep continue as you continue to do more and more? And then they stay came up. Elder Scrolls Online came up with like champion levels before that it was was called something else and I, I forget I forget now what it was called but you have like this power creep that continues so like that's another question to talk about it's a whole other show but what is Ash is going to do when that level cap is hit 
are they going to slowly but surely with expansions, you know, continue the, you know, here's another five levels or we're going to increase the power of certain items. Like those are questions that are good topics of discussion for us because Ashes has a plan for that. So, um, so anyway, like when it comes to how fast should it, should it actually be like, I, I don't really have like a, a an answer for it. I know how I would like it to happen. You mean I don't an even answer other than the math you just gave us? Rather than the math. <laughs> I, but I would like it to feel more to where I'm so engrossed and immersed in the game and in my character and in the world that I don't really even notice it. So. Okay. You ready for me to give you the nightmare scenario? Yes, please go. Freeholds are first come, first serve. <laughs> We're screwed. You're definitely screwed. <laughs> no, I'm screwed. Right? That's the nightmare. That's the nightmare for me, right? Freeholds yeah. are yeah. like 7% on the server, and it's first come, first serve. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. We're done. You just, I, 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 and it's in it, it goes so counter to everything I want out of the game if that's the case, right? I don't now I'm not saying that's the case. I don't know if that's the case. We don't really know how these things are going to be implemented. What we do know is that if somebody has one, there is a way that they can more or less recycle it, but it's usually through like lack of gameplay. So if somebody has a freehold and continues to be on the freehold, then it seems like they will more or less indefinitely be on the freehold. Like you don't well, have until to tell until their node gets steamrolled until the node gets steamrolled. And then you end up, you know, I guess bidding on it, you know, like there's some, there's some mechanics in there, but that's the fear for me. Right. Is that I really have a lot invested in the idea of this freehold system. And at the same time, I really, really do not want to blast through 50 levels of an MMO that I will have been waiting for years, years to play. Right. Like, why do I want to ruin that? Why do I want to play that game? That makes no sense to me. Yeah. And I know you could say like, oh, you could roll an alt and enjoy that. It's like, no, I will have ruined it for myself. Carverus in chat says the, the lore forged army will rise. And I, I chuckle because yeah, probably, but until the Asmund gold army comes and poops on our table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that was a good question. Axman. Thank you for that one. Uh, all right. So we got a couple more here, gentlemen. This is from tested weevil says what is your current favorite class combination and as a second part what is the one class combination that you will probably never try sunny ravencourt going to you first never try a tank i'll never try a tank i just won't and followed by a healer um i i just think that like i think healing is so complicated and so important i should probably put healer first because i'm more likely to try a tank than i am a healer to be totally honest with you, but I probably won't try either one of those. I'm just not the kind of gamer that is going to have that level of responsibility inside of a group like that. I'm not dedicated to those kind of gameplay styles. I'm not, you know, going to uh, be able to be counted on in that kind of manner. And I know how important it is. And I know how much effort it takes to get good at that kind of stuff. I'm just never going to do it. Hmm. I, I, Sonny is yeah. the most selfish MMO <laughs> player on the no, planet. No, I understand it. my limitations <laughs> on this. I understand my limitations <laughs> that like, I'm not going to be a good healer. So like, no, I just don't want to do it. But it also runs in the in my gameplay style, right? Like we've talked time and time and time again what kind of game player I am, and it's solo. You don't roll a healer when you do that. It's just not what you do. Um, it, it, here's the other thing, too. As much as I want to be a bard, I'm legit worried that, like, that's a very bad <laughs> class for me because I'm not sure whether or not that's a solo style gameplay at all. So... I don't know. I, I think I'm much more likely to roll a bard than I am a cleric or a tank. But um, yeah, cleric and tank are just kind of out for me. What, what did which one do you think you're most likely going to roll? Um, probably mage at this point. Mage seems to be the leader in the clubhouse. Rogue is always uh, a possibility. Hunter has its uh, you know hunter has its charms for me as well. Hunter. Uh, pardon me, Ranger. I apologize. 
You got me on that one. That's a good one. <laughs> so you are Ranger, a professional. Ra I know, know your classes. <laughs> Ranger is a good one. Um, but Ranger to me, you know, is always one of those things that always depends on like, what do I get with the Ranger, right? Like, do I get pets? Do I get cool stuff like that? Do I get companions? Sometimes even a summoner can be attractive that way. Uh, if you can get something else, you know, a pet type of class. Um, but yeah, um, all of those ones are, are very interesting to me. Mage, Mage is the leader in the clubhouse with some barred sprinkles on the side, I would say. What about you, Cash? Ranger, Ranger? Okay, perfect. So here's mine. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> All right, JB, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm kind of locked in at this point because I made a freaking, I made a gush video on the Ranger. Yeah, you did. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, so I, I am still, I'm still very much in the clouds on what I'm going to do for my, uh, for my secondary, but absolutely Ranger. Um, I'm looking at either Ranger Ranger, Ranger Rogue, Rogue Ranger, uh, and those combinations mostly because I want to see what the stealth looks like on the Rogue. Um, Rogue Rogue is is not out of the wheelhouse for me, which Ooh. is crazy, which is why I say Ro it could po possibly be Rogue Ranger, and I want to see what the stealth looks like. But um, I'm still very, very heavily leaning toward Ranger Ranger, but I'm also considering Ranger Cleric, which is a very interesting thought. Ranger like, Cleric. Ranger Cleric. How are you going to write that backstory? Solbo. Um, I don't know. Ranger trips and falls into um, <laughs> some healing sap or something at one point. All of his arrows are now imbued with healing sap. <laughs> I don't know. I'll come up with something amazing. It really depends on it depends on that. It depends on um, how the rogue looks. It depends on how the augment system works. That is a that's a big deal. You, you want to talk about a banger of a show, Intrepid? Mm -hmm. We need to see the augment system sooner than later. I think it's a massive system that needs to be dropped into our laps. And it's a just, huge question mark. Huge question. Huge. Mark. Yeah, it really is. Mark. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so just real quick, class combo I'll never try. Tank tank. Really? Or oh, pretty much that. pretty yeah. much any any version of the tank. Like Sunny, I'm just not interested in that. And I'm I love my tanks. I love mm -hmm. you. You're amazing. Thank you for jumping on the grenade. But it's just not not my style. JB. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to give you the first one I never will do, and that is a tank bard, which is a siren. That, to me, I just... Great name, though. Yeah, it really is. That's pretty perfect, actually. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. It's... How would that even work? I like don't know. Sword and shield, and, like, you just sling them both and pull out, like, a Yaz flute? <laughs> yes. Maybe your, maybe your shield's a giant bass drum for a drum kit. I don't know. Um, That's a, yeah, like you no, your shield is like a big old giant like uh, stand up bass. There you go. It's yeah, you're all rockabillyed out. But the siren is so, <laughs> such a good name. It gives so much visuals, right? Like they're dragging the sailors in through song. Yeah, Sonny. Think about this. Wearing like zebra Odysseus, pants. this is fantastic. The siren song bringing them in and absorbing all the aggro. It's brilliant. Name alone. Name alone makes it interesting. Oh, but yeah, no, you're, you're right. Unplayable. <laughs> <laughs> but, but absolutely unplayable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to be honest. There is, for me, it's, this is a tough one. I'm going to tell you why. I, I'm leaning towards Mage Mage. I really am. However, is that Archmage? Archmage? Um, let's see. I haven't brought up. Let me, uh, b -b 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 yeah, Archwizard. So, but I'll be honest. Every time, there's a part of me that questions, hey, this is a new MMO. What do you think about maybe doing something new? Something you would just, you know, you normally would never dedicate yourself to. I'm going to tell you, real talk, every time I watch that cleric archetype, it is... <sighs> It, Ooh. it makes me think it makes me consider playing a cleric because I, ne it. I never do that. And honestly, we're going to you're always going to need healers <laughs> in a we're game like this. You're going to need healers. Um, and so I don't know. So I, I'm going to have to. I'm sorry. This is breaking the question, but it's either going to be mage mage or maybe a cleric cleric. 
So you yeah. are gonna watch this fighter reveal and never turn back. No, I'm not doing a fighter. No way. No, uh, that's not. It's not for me. I, I appreciate everybody who loves it because it really does look cool. You know, the Rinkai or it's just I can't wait to see that more so than the fighter to be honest. But um, <gasps> what? Total side note. Did you see the freaking uh, the pirate? stuff they had today yeah mm. starter gear all the leaves oh. yeah dude looks very i cool. mean totally yeah. simple but i mean they're fleshing this stuff out and that's like mm -hmm. that's my race i seen it and i went oh sorry yep hijo de la luna <laughs> says in chat they're not wrong quote anytime someone says let's do something new you end up stealth archer <laughs> <That's> true <laughs> yeah it's very oh, true that's it's good. very true that's good that's yeah, good yeah i mean they're I don't know. It surprises me that you'd go mage as like your feel good character. I, I would have thought that that you would have. Uh, I don't know. That one that one weirds me out a little bit. I didn't think that that would be where you would go to. I thought for sure Rogue would be in your wheelhouse. Right. I mean, you've played a million rogues. Well, it, it's like and I've always said this. I kind of like equivocate that to compare it to. uh it's like that weekend fling, you know, like you go off, you have fun, whatever, but you come back to reality and realize, hey, that's just like that's your weekend <laughs> class that you're really just, you know, you're just going out to dinner and enjoying some maybe some light hand holding down the street. You know, you're standing on the corner of the street to be the gentleman. But, you know, you, space. it's the, at the end of the day, <laughs> like, you, you know. You return to normal life after that. <laughs> I thought you were going with like a vacation motif, but no, you just leaned right into this one. <laughs> I went all the way. Magic mistress. Yeah. Chat. Yep. No, there you go. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> just sent that one. Yep. Leaned right into the one night stand. Oops. Oh, oh yeah. Jordan. Where's the flex, honey? Come on. You're, I was going to say slacking. like, maybe I don't want to buy a condo in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> but like, oh, you know? <laughs> All right. Well, we got one more question, you guys. And, and this one is uh, by one of our very, very favorite uh, patrons and friends, the lovely Wataro. And she says, other than questing, what else are you going to spend time on? Crafting, PvP, et cetera, et cetera. Sunny, we're going to you first. I mean, do you really even have to ask? Like, of course, I'm going to spend time doing money making adventures and things like that and crafting you know people have asked me a, a lot about like what what crafting professions are you going to start with and the answer is i never start with a crafting profession ever i always 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 start with a gathering profession so as i level i will gather i will gather the heck out of everything and only at the end of the game will i transition into other things like that but like I'm very, very excited about a lot of those those mechanics in the game that have to do with freeholds, that have to do with the towns, that have to do with these building systems and whether or not you want bandits with a black market or don't want bandits with a black market and how the caravan, you know, transport network works. Like that's my game loop right there. That's going to be that's going to be a lot of fun for me. Um, the crafting is like super cool and everything like that. But some games I don't do any of it because I have more fun just moving money around the various economies and stuff like that and going and just doing that. It doesn't, it doesn't even have to be that. So it's all these other systems around the game. The mayoral system looks fascinating, fascinating. So there's a lot of stuff in this game that I'm excited about outside of combat, outside of leveling, outside of PVP and outside of questing. Questing probably honest to God, would be like last on my list um, for things that I'm like really interested. Wow. In. How did you get this job? <laughs> Seriously, just you wondering how the hell time. you ended you do. up here. You say this every time. Like, <laughs> I get it. I get it. I love the lore. I don't love the questing. <laughs> no. And that's fine because I, you know, I think, uh, I think it rounds us, it rounds us out perfectly. We have, we have differing opinions in a lot of these things. And we have, we all three of us have different play styles, which I think is, is fantastic. Um, anyway, Sonny, now that you've disparaged, uh, my number one favorite thing to do in MMOs, I really appreciate it. Jibs. Yes, sir. What are you going to focus on? What are you going to be spending the most time in, in Ashes of Creation? Where is your niche questing. in Vera Cassius. going to be? Questing and lore. <laughs> because I'm the perfect co-host. <laughs> I want you to remember this when you close your eyes to sleep tonight. Anyway, uh, no, for me, it's going to be probably a lot, probably a lot of things, uh, to be honest. 
it, obviously the lore and, and the story, the questing. Um, there will be a lot of videos from Lore Forge that spawned from that, you know, covering the lore and the storyline and the regions and all the things for, for the peoples. But I think it goes without saying group content. I really want to hang out with friends. I really, really want to enjoy this game with friends. Really, really do. That means a lot to me. But I also want to ex- really spend time exploring and just getting out and seeing the world and learning as much about it as I can. And then on the weekends, I'm going to be running my little shop, my little stall uh, at whatever node we're going to be located at. That's something I really want to do. I really want to have a little stall, a little merchant shop. You know, Sunny may lure you in on the, you know, some, some, Weekend deals, you know, <laughs> like a fruit cart, like a fruit cart, <laughs> special deals Sonny's on gonna, watermelons. So you, you're going to have to open it up right outside of his freehold. So Sonny has to come out of his tavern and ask if you have a permit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he totally wants to. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to have to contact the proper authorities because he does not seem to have the proper permit. Uh, are you the about yeah, I noticed you you don't have an occupancy uh, sign on your cart there. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you're not handling your fruit with gloves. Uh, I'm going to have to give you a uh, knock for that. The what is the temperature of your refrigeration unit? It has to be exactly 32 <laughs> degrees Celsius. That food uh, is going to be spoiled. 32. You have no idea how Celsius works, do you? <laughs> 32 <laughs> degrees Celsius. Oh, man. You know me with numbers. It's random. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Well... This was fun. This was happy hour number two, everybody. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Did oh, I don't get to give you my oh, you, you know <laughs> what I mean? We got one more guy on this show. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, remember. No uh, problem. No, no. I'm the perfect host for you. Remember that now. You go ahead now. <laughs> I think I think perfect is out the window at this point, pal. <laughs> yeah, solid eight out of ten. I almost red flagged your ass on that <laughs> I'll make it quick. <laughs> Everybody kind of already knows where Cass is headed. But, um, <laughs> anyway, it, it mattered to me because you can only master two professions in Grandmaster. Or you can only, yeah, what, master two in Grand... No, wait, master three, Grandmaster two. There you got it. Um, yeah, it's hard. So uh, probably hunting and gathering for me is probably going to be the, the biggest stuff. But I will also want to process and tan. So we're probably looking at hunting and tanning for me for the two major things that I'm going to be doing. I want to take those skins and then be able to sell those. Um, but anything that has to do with nature is what I'm going to be doing. So fishing, probably doing a ton of fishing, probably doing cooking, um, maybe leatherworking. Maybe these I'll are, dabble. These are all crafting. So your answer is craft crafting is going to be a majority of what I'm going to be most likely doing. Playing out my fantasy of a ranger hunting the land. I love how whenever forest. we're like in these in-depth descriptor descriptions, Sonny just like lays it right in. The, so you want to craft? Yeah, I want to craft. <laughs> so I'm just Sonny. saying, he's like, so the question was, what are you going to spend your time on? Crafting, PvP, questing? And he's like, I'd like to do the first 10 levels of leather working and then follow it up with <laughs> some uh, mining. And <laughs> it's like, okay, you, <laughs> you want to craft. We get it. <laughs> you suck you all the descriptors simple. out of it. <laughs> I appreciate you making me sound like Simple Jack. It's very accurate. I'm well, throwing that there. I mean, it's, after yelling at me for not not having enough lore basis and saying that I'm not big on questing, you just listed off nine crafting professions. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it affected our friendship when you said that. <laughs> it's your fault. That's uh, what you're into. That's fine, but... Whatever. Hey, Jim, just close the show. Yeah, no <laughs> problem. <laughs> yeah, I got you, buddy. No problem. Here. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you, everyone here at Lore Forge Live. We hope you all enjoyed the show. And if you enjoyed your time here, let us know how we're doing, whether it's YouTube comments or reviews on the show, on podcast apps, whatever, however you fancy, whatever you do, let us know how we're doing. You can always call us at 516-875-1776. And you can always email us, loreforgehq at gmail.com. Sunny. 
Zebra Ravencourt. You can go. Oh, so, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were done. Uh, you can go to loreforge.com to find links to all of our Ashes of Creation content. And that includes YouTube. YouTube is where you can find all of our videos, including Cash's brand new video on Carfin, which is really quite spectacular. I say that every week, but every week there's always something spectacular that one of these two guys has done for our YouTube channel. So check that out youtube.com slash at loreforged you can follow us on twitch we're building a lovely little twitch community it's a lot of fun we had all sorts of people in here tonight watching the stream and there were a lot of people watching the stream earlier today while i starved serfs out of my town in foundation alpha 2 cannot come soon enough <laughs> as far as the streaming goes that's all i'm gonna say uh that is at twitch.tv slash loreforged hq and finally patreon we would like to make a special thanks to our patreon channel for providing us all of the content for tonight's show they are truly some of our favorite people and uh they are supporting us and that is at patreon.com slash loreforgedhq. We have one level, it's five bucks, and you get everything early, plus the state of the owl, plus what we totally forgot, everybody except for JB. It turns out that there's some cool stuff from way, way, way back in the day when we were kind of like inventing the uh, concept of the show. Cash. Friends, we have a really fun Discord community that is accenting everything that we do. Uh, it's really nice to dive in there and see the folks uh, shucking it up a bit about Ashes of Creation and just things generally going on in their lives. Because what we are trying to build is a family and it's working out very, very well. We got some really, really cool folks um, that are joining us for Ashes. Uh, I'd like to welcome a couple of new Discord members, Sira and Ludacrisp. Every week we get some really fun names that make me <laughs> I like laugh. That I like that one. <laughs> but anyway, everybody is welcome in our in our community. And if you had the question lingering in your mind about whether or not we are going to be having a guild, yes, we are. We will have the guild out, established, and be recruiting before Alpha 2. Promise. Promise you that that is going to take place. You can follow us on the former Twitter, now known as X, at LoreForgedHQ. And if you want the really fun stuff, we've established a new uh, social media on Instagram. And you can follow us there at LoreForgedHQ. It's been pretty fun. Yeah. Sonny's putting some video stuff up. Jibs is putting some cool stuff. And I couple posts too yay <laughs> me for getting involved <laughs> on the social media get off my lawn but anyway yeah that's fun uh agreed well everyone thank you so much for tuning in we hope you enjoyed your time here we can't wait to see you next week because next week we're covering the fighter archetype dev live stream have a great week we love you take care peace love and honeybees safe travels adventures <laughs>